Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. What a difference a couple days makes. Uh, it's about a little over 80 degrees, but it's just absolutely beautiful. You know, the humidity is about 60%. Uh, compared to last week, it's just a dream. So let's get downstairs. A couple things I want to talk about on this Mishmash Monday. Okay, we're back down the shop. A couple things I want to talk about today because it is Mishmash Monday. Um, I just re finished uh, yesterday rebuilding uh, the uh, two porch hallway lights. Uh, they're old lights, and I uh, took them down. I uh, I uh, did a rebuild on them, and I have to tell you something. I've always been impressed with old-time electronic or electrical construction. How old-time uh, lamps and fixtures were made it, compared to the new junk that they're putting out today. It's amazing that the stuff even passes code with some of the stuff, but it does, and but, you know, some of this, a lot of this stuff got thrown out, you know, when they demolished houses and stuff. And there are companies now and people that go around and take out all these fixtures. All these fixtures can be rebuilt and they they can come out beautiful, you know, and, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. But I have a, uh, a little collection of old and electrical stuff because when I was a kid, we would, you know... My father, my grandfather, whenever they took down a fixture, they didn't throw it out. They would stick it under the bench somewhere, and I guess they figured that they could uh, that they could use it or parts of it some other time. And they were right, because those things were meant to last and meant to be rebuilt. And today, everything's disposable. It's a shame. Let's see what well, I'm talking about. These are the about. switches I pulled out of the uh, the hallway light that I did and uh, you know replaced them. These are some uh, older switches, and I, obviously I didn't replace them, but these were UL switches. They lasted. You know, th these don't last forever. But the funny thing is, <laughs> am I the only one that does this? And again, my grandfather. Before you throw them out, always take off that knurled nut. I don't know why, but I must have a few of these floating around the house, but take them apart. And these have come in handy for me for a couple times. Now they make these, you know, they're made of like aluminum, but uh, and this might be aluminum, but anyway... Take these and we throw them in a box somewhere. And then when you need them, you can't find them. Now, a lot of times when you go to flea markets or tractor shows or something, they'll, they'll have boxes and things like that. And a lot of times there'll be uh, units that weren't used during a job. Like here's an NOS. This looks like some kind of a, and you can see here it says reset by throwing to off. And you can see it's some kind of, a, probably a, a, almost like a, a, a circuit breaker or something that's within a box. You could see it's never been used. There's no punch outs taken out, but look at what a nice little unit this is. So, you know, I picked this up, you know, cause you can always, you know, find a, a use for it. Uh, some other things that I picked up, like you see these heavy duty plugs. Now these, these are quite expensive, especially the ones that aren't made overseas. You know what I mean? They, they have a lot of these that are made in, um, in China and whatnot that are really kind of junk but when you get a good one and uh, a decent one these things can be pretty expensive so when you see them at a good price you know pick them up so uh, I make my own extension cords you know like in some of the extension cords we have a kind of junk especially for running something that has some heavy draw to it so I found a, a, a like a, a box of these I bought the whole case you know they might have been a buck a piece or something. And then I found a couple of these. Now, look how nice this is. This is a, you want to talk about a nice box to go at the end of extension cord. And that's exactly what I made. I, I got some heavy-duty cable. Look at that cable, huh? And this is an extension cord. This is the kind of thing you plug into your generator or something. Or, you know, you got this real thick, heavy-duty uh, cord that's, uh, you can see here, it's 12.3 is, uh, is the rating. But it's... Uh, a 600 volt and uh, this is good stuff you know and then on the end of it you know i put uh, one of those boxes with the it's uh this is just a sweet uh, sweet setup you know it's not something you're going to use if you want to use your hedge trimmer or something but when you have that if you got you used a generator or something and you you pass an cord through the uh through the window this is the kind of stuff you want now use. for slightly lighter duty uh look at this old leviton you know this is beautiful, isn't it? When you get the, uh, but for, for uh, lighter duty extension cords or something, uh, again, I would buy the whole box if they had, you know, 50 cents a piece, I'd, I'd buy the whole thing. And here's a nice, these are rubber. And what's nice about these, you drop them on the ground. They don't get crack or anything. And uh, you can see they're heavy duty. And uh, again, new old stock, but this, these things last forever and they're really good quality. Now, the very early electrical components were made a lot of porcelain. And you'll see a lot of these. These were, you know, from the olden days. But you know, this never goes bad. And uh, they rip it out and everything, but there's no reason. Anybody that knows their business, like old timers, if you go with an old time electrician, he'll be like, 
that's the, that's the best they make, you know, just like old brass pipe. When you go into a house and there's old brass pipe, what are you going to change it and put in that new peck tubing? No, you leave it. But uh, this here is porcelain and you can see uh, this socket can be totally rebuilt if you have a problem. If it shorts out, you know, you have a short or whatever, you can totally change the inside porcelain. This one here was later on. This is a copy. I don't believe this is Bakelite, but I believe this is like a plate. But this, these were good. This is because I do my antique uh, light bulbs. I put these on uh, plaques or whatever. And But you can see here that... You know, you can connect your wires right directly to it and then uh, nice little unit, right? Years ago when I was putting my shop and you see that little sub panel, that's everything on the shop. So when I throw that switch, I never have to worry if I left anything now, on. Uh, some of these old units like this one here, I find fascinating. Look at this. Now, now look at this piece, right? This is made of some kind of, uh, I don't know, it's probably, <laughs> probably a, a compound asbestos, but it's all copper. You see this copper with brass. And uh, these are like knife switches, you know, they're bus bar switches. Look at that, all copper. And you see how that works just and all you'd need is, you know, you put a little handle here and look at that. It's just beautiful. And it takes fuses. Now, fuses are something that you could still get. And there's a lot of people today, a lot of electricians, old time electricians that actually like the fuse. Now, a circuit breaker is easy because when it pops, you just throw it back. And these were a pain to change. But there are a lot of electricians that said that the uh, the fuse was a safer because it, it disconnected right away with a circuit breaker has to heat up before it does. And anyway, I, I you know, I would like to I know we have a lot of electricians, a lot of guys out there that know their stuff. And, and what your ideas were on the old time fuses? Again, they're a pain because, you know, they're disposable. Uh, a circuit breaker lasts for years. This thing one time. But if you're putting in a sub panel and you don't have a lot of uh, surges or something like that. Uh, you might be, you know, inclined to use something like this. I think it's pretty cool. I've got boxes like this all over the house, and you know, when you look inside the box, you see uh, all kinds. Like here, I got wall switches. This is for projects that I was going to do. You know, wall switches here. You got some toggle switches, different types. You like those ball end toggle switches? I always like those. You know, I try and always get USA made, but sometimes you have to. You know, sometimes you can't, but I try and always get the new old stock uh, USA or, or made that. Are, and these these switches are much better than regular switches. But how about this? You see this here? This is Bakelite. Check this out. <sighs> Come on, tell me this isn't cool. If you're an electrician, you'll get a kick out of it. Remember these old indicator lights that would had the shielding around it? And you would throw the light and let you know that it was on. And had the little bulb in here. How cool is that? NOS. I love this stuff. I don't know. Now, why. basically, what I wanted to talk about today is uh, wire nuts, okay? Uh, because I know there is so many, there's such a diverse crowd in our community that uh, I'm sure everybody has different opinions. And I just want to go through a few things. Now, uh, these are the typical wire nuts that you have. Now, years ago, they were made from, the early ones were made from porcelain, which were really cool. And then they had ones that were made from Bakelite, you know, again, nice ones, you know. But uh, you could see here there were different types. Now, uh, usually they're color coded. So depending on the color is usually the size. But you could see here that uh, doesn't always stay into play. Can you imagine if... Uh, you know, your your father was working with some of these and he sent you to the hardware store and said, get the white, the white wire nuts. And then you came back with these and you said, here, these are the white ones, you know. So you have to go by, usually they go by gauge size or how many wires it can hold. But some of them on the inside, you could see they have like a metal spring type on the inside. Um, usually they do. Some uh, don't. Some have just, uh, just, they're just plastic on the inside. And uh, like this one here. More for like probably electronics, things like that. So not too uh, high voltage. But I wanted to discuss about the wire nuts and how you do it. How, you know, you do it. Uh, because I, I'm going to show you the way I was taught. Which again, I'm no electrician. But let's get Normally to Normally when you buy wire nuts, they'll come into a, a package like this. You can see these are an assortment of red and yellow. And it, it tells you here the yellow has, a, you know, you can put two 18 gauge wires. Or a maximum of three 12 gauge wires. And uh, the red uh, wire uh, nuts, you could put a minimum of two, 16, uh, two 14 gauge and a maximum of five 12 gauge. So uh, you could see. But again, let's go through now, what I was Here's some, uh, some vintage wire, too. You can see this is here. Is, uh, we have uh, copper stranded wire. And here we have some solid copper wire. And this stuff, you can't even. This stuff is so pricey now that it's, uh, 
it's almost cost prohibitive. This is heavy duty stuff too. Um, I, again, when I see if I see a, a spool of this thrown out, or so, I stop and grab it because you know if you're gonna make a short run or whatever the case may be. But uh, now, typically the way I was taught, this is the way I was taught. Now, don't laugh, especially you electricians out there. I know, but. Now, if you read how you're supposed to do it, you're supposed to line up the two ends so that they're equal, okay? Uh, a lot of wire nut manufacturers say you do not have to twist it, okay? That you can just take your wire nut like this, and you could just turn it on like this, and you just turn it until, and you, you, you squeeze this part real hard, these two, so that they don't spin until it locks in. And don't be afraid to over tighten, you know, it's going to be tight. Okay, when it's tight like that, done. You're done. Now, you have a solid, it won't come off. You know what I mean? This is what they say. Now, if you undo it to check it out, it takes some un takes a little while to undo. See, that's how you can tell when you have a good one. But look what happened. You see, what it, it twists it for you, more or less, you know? But the way I was taught, you know, the way my grandfather did all the time, was you twist the, you know, you twist the wire first. And I'll show you how that I would works. say, okay, you take the wire, you twist it around, okay? And the reason you do that is because if the wire nut falls off, this thing doesn't come apart. But you saw that it does kind of twist it together on its own. And then you put it on here, twisted, and press down again. And it kind of gives you the same result, you know, doesn't it? But, you know, twist it down, holding the back too so it doesn't come apart. And again, it's a solid move. But let me tell you the other thing that was funny that I do and I still do today. And again, the electricians. Okay, are so here's what's it's almost embarrassing to show. But then we would take my, again, my grandfather, take a piece of electrical tape like this on the wires and then uh, wrap it around like this and around the, <laughs> see that, does this look familiar from one of you amateurs? And then wrap it around the, uh, this is the way a lot of my receptacles in, in the uh, the lamps and things like that, or or the the hallway lights, the porch lights. If you see tape on there, that was probably done by it. And now I know, like I said, is that redundant? And, it, and he always did that so that this thing couldn't twist off or fall off or something. I, it's probably not the code we have, but that's the way I still do it. I still do it that way. Is is that wrong? Is it is it messed up? But that's the way. You know, this way is no way that can come apart. And. Uh, I just don't. I, yeah, I still do a it. solid copper like this. Again, you would need a stronger. But again, line up the ends here. Take your wire nut. Again, it's got to be a heavy duty one. Turn it on. This has a heavy thread on here. Again, we didn't twist it together. Turn it on. Give it, you know, holding this nice and tight. Okay, that's on there. Now that is a solid. I mean, that isn't going anywhere. You ain't pulling that apart. I mean, it's threaded on here. Let me show you what it looks like when we take it off now. Okay. Got a good one, a good, okay, that was just side by side, but you can see what it does. It actually threads the copper and puts it together, okay? However, <laughs> let me show you the way I was taught. Okay, now, I, we don't do a lot of twisting of the solid brand, but when you twist this around using your alignment, your Klein linemans, and you twist it around just like that, and then you you cut off the tip, so this way it's, it's nice and even, you know, again, using your Kleins like this, you know, give a nice cut to the tip so it's even and then when you feed on your wire nut like this it's already twisted and then really tighten this down i mean that's there you go really tight that is super solid and then <laughs> grandpa would finish it off with the obligatory tape now uh my question to you again now if this thing fell off this thing isn't it's still still solid i mean it's hard to get this apart just just the way it is i can't pull it apart you know so uh just just want to know what you you know the electron the code what you guys think from experience again i don't do much solid copper wires uh but that that has always been intriguing to me about you know especially when you get a good wire nut one that really clamps that you could tell the good ones because it works right off the bat some of the other ones aren't so good you know these you got to be careful of the soft ones. Again, what's your opinion on it? Which type do you like? Which ones do you Eye use? Eye candy time. <laughs> Remember we did this restoration on these old, these things were beat to heck, these old Kleins, but, and these Klein coats. Oh, these Klein coats are so nice. If you do, if you never put a pair on, we're going to be doing some more, but if you haven't put a pair on, it's just the, the most beautiful grips, even better than factory Kleins. How about that? Uh, I just love it. Okay, this. everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great start for your week. Take care now. Bye-bye.